In this video, we're going to discuss the two-dimensional particle on a ring problem. Now, we've already discussed translational motion and vibrational motion. So now we're gonna move on to rotational motion. And just like we did with, uh, with translational and vibrational motion, we're going to first introduce the physical problem and kind of talk about it just in the sense of classically, how do we treat it using classical mechanics and then start to introduce quantum mechanics only after we've got a, a decent grasp of what the classical problem looks like. So this is what the classical problem looks like visually, right? You have some particles. So I have this green sphere here. There's a particle that is traveling on a ring, right? In two dimensions. So it can only move in the Y and X direction. And it's going to be a certain distance R away from the center of that ring, right? Now, as it's traveling along this circle, it's going to have a linear momentum that's going to kind of bisect this, uh, this circle that is traveling along, right? So it'll have a, a linear momentum that I'll use the Greek letter rho to describe here, right? Um, and we're gonna say that there's no potential energy acting on this particle. So the potential energy is gonna be equal to zero. So that would mean that the only contribution to the total energy would be the kinetic energy of this particle. So the energy of this particle would just be the square of the momentum over 2m, right? So this guy, rho, is our momentum. And specifically the linear momentum, right? So that's gonna be a clear distinction here uh, as I'll talk about in a second, right? This is gonna be the particle's linear momentum and this will be its, its uh, kinetic energy contribution, right? Um, but in the case of something that's traveling in a circular motion, right? that's not going to be the momentum that will be most relevant to a, a particle traveling in a circle. The more relevant momentum would be the angular momentum, which if we were to draw the angular momentum as a vector here, right, it would be coming out of the board. So let me see if I can draw kind of a vector. It will be coming out of the board here, right? And we'll use the um, notation J sub Z, right? Because this would technically be going in the Z direction. So if I add a, a third axis here, Right, that third axis is gonna be the Z direction. So technically this is coming out of the board at us, right? That's where the, the vector for uh, angular momentum is coming from. Um, in fact, if you were to you know flip this circle on its side, right? So let's say we were to look at like a side view of this circle, then the angular momentum vector will be pointing straight up, right? So this will be our vector for angular momentum so how can we actually define angular momentum? Well, it's related to the linear momentum of the particle, right? So we'll have the angular momentum. It's gonna be equal to plus or minus the linear momentum times the radius of our circle. So this is still our linear momentum and this is our angular momentum. Right, so now we've defined the angular momentum in terms of the linear momentum. So what we can do now is kind of solve this equation for the linear momentum and re-express our kinetic energy in terms of angular momentum, which is gonna be more important for this context of a particle traveling in a circle, right? So if you just do the algebra here, then you get rho is equal to jz over r, Right, and so if you take this expression and you plug it back into the expression for our kinetic energy, right, then you'll get an energy expression in terms of the, uh, the angular momentum, right? So we'll have the energy is gonna be equal to J sub Z squared over two M R squared. Right, so this is the energy of the two-dimensional particle on a ring in terms of the angular momentum rather than the linear momentum. And one thing you might notice here, um, this uh, MR squared term, this is a physical quantity known as the moment of inertia. 
So the moment of inertia, which is a really important quantity for a particle traveling in a circular motion. So this is actually the amount of force that's necessary to accelerate the particle in a circle with a particular momentum, right? So, uh, so this moment of inertia, which we usually use a capital letter I to denote the moment of inertia. So we can actually rewrite this energy expression in terms of the moment of inertia. We'll have J sub Z squared over to I, right? So, um, so this would be classically the total energy of a particle on a ring. Now in quantum mechanics, when we start to look at this energy expression, it's gonna look very similar to this energy expression for the classical um, particle on a ring, except the angular momentum is going to be quantized. And we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about how we treat angular momentum in quantum mechanics differently from how we treat it in classical mechanics, but this is going to be the quantity that's going to be um, quantized that will cause this energy expression to look different in, uh, in quantum mechanics than it does in classical mechanics. Now, if we're thinking about how we build this quantum model, right? So I'll just kind of draw out how we uh, build this quantum model uh, for the particle on the ring. You can think of, um, if we establish a ring here, Right, so let's establish a two-dimensional ring. Right, so it's almost like a racetrack here, right? So you can think of your particle as like a NASCAR going along this racetrack with some mass M, right? But to, to kind of bring in the quantum mechanics here, when we're thinking about the, uh, the potential, along this racetrack, the potential is gonna be equal to zero. Inside the racetrack, potential is infinite and outside of the racetrack potential is also infinite right so that's kind of how you can think about the particle on a ring in a quantum sense is that you know it's really just like a car just tied to this racetrack where you know it has a zero potential along the ring so it's traveling in a circular motion with no external potential acting on it and inside the ring infinite potential uh outside the ring infinite potential where it cannot go so in the next video, what we're going to look at is take this quantum problem and start to look at what's the wave function going to be, what's the form of the Hamiltonian, and what is the energy expression going to be for the particle on a ring.